This channel is supported by my online fishing courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner, as well as my books, and you can learn more about the books at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Yeah, good morning from the Florida Everglades. Yeah, something a little different this morning. Took a little bit of a drive, and uh, yeah, gonna uh, bucktail over some structure. It's gonna be, you know, to me, it's a little bit like uh, striper fishing. And uh, yeah, trying to get groupers, and they are so much fun to bucktail. Nothing hits like those things. And uh, you know, so, so far, I've never had a loser trip here. I don't want to jinx myself, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's, it's usually good, so we'll see. Oh, it seems like there's always cool things to see here. And today uh, it was the jumping rays. And uh, yeah, we'll get to see that in a bit. Yeah, I'm just using my uh, swing hook fluke bucktails, five inch gulp grub I'm putting Procure on. You'll never see me doing that for fluke. Uh, yeah, it was Elias that turned me on to this fishing probably about five years ago now, four years ago. And uh, yeah, he mentioned using the Procure. He was putting on whatever he was using. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll put it on. It, I've done this fishing before. I've got marks here. This worked for me. I'm going to do it. It's like the only time of the year almost that I'm putting uh, Procure or anything. But, uh, well, I don't want to change what has worked in the past. All right, it's like 15 to 20 feet of water over rocky structure. Just snap that bucktail up. Let it settle back. Watch the line as it goes down. And you're waiting to see. It's like the sea bass jigging that I do in the fall. You're just waiting to see that tick in the line. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Good drift. Really nice drift. Perfect. Really going right through the... Marks. Oh, 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 first drift. Got yep, nothing good. Whoop, that's bait. Okay. I'll take that. Uh, so, yeah, I have a fallback plan. So, yeah, the last time I was here was two years ago, and I was doing Quite nothing on the bucktails, and I had f caught a couple of small catfish, and I decided to put one down live, and oh my goodness, if you put down live catfish, it was like insta bites, you know, it was like lock and load. But I couldn't get anything on the jig. So, in the back of my mind, I want to fall back. You know, it's a long drive here and back. And, um, you know, I don't want to come here and catch nothing. So, uh, I've got some stuff to, you know, if I want to try bait. And uh, so that um, lizard fish is going to, you know, be bait if I can't get some fish on the jigs. I do not want to come all this way. Not catch fish. Yeah, so I'm based on Pine Island, and uh, this is about a two hour drive for me. through the numbers. One point two. Nice drift. This is just a three quarter ounce. Drop it a little deeper here. Heading for the spot. Watch 
watch that wine real careful. Oh, like I said, watch it carefully. Not good. <laughs> okay, let's do what I do fluking. Lock it. Yeah, I got just over the structure of foul hooked a uh, mangrove snapper. So even if there was a grouper there, I wasn't going to get him. And I wasn't going to get one on that first drift either because I quickly caught that lizard fish. So I often get questions about which kayak I'm using. So I'm using the uh, autopilot because I had to drive somewhere. And this is 12 feet. Fits nicely in the short bed pickup with a bed extender. And uh, the EPDL, which is uh, longer, heavier, that, that stays at my dock. like the spot right here. Here's the spot. This is it right here. Come on. If I don't get hit. Damn. Yeah, if I don't cannot get hit. I'm gonna um Take a drift with that lizard fish. Oh, that was a hit. I still know what it was, but it was definitely a saw that line twitch. No, I'm using 30 pound braid, 40 uh, pound leader. Um, as with this kind of jigging in any setting, uh, either white line or yellow, something you can see very easily. Okay, a Goliath, a little guy. That's the target species, not quite the target size, but we'll, we'll take it for a start. Let's start heading back up here. Target's rocky structure, but yeah, sometimes you get hung up. It's limestone. You can usually go ahead of it, pull it out most of the time. Almost always get them back. Yeah, and after you're stuck in rocky stuff like that, you've got to uh, make sure the hook didn't get damaged. Jack. Could be a catfish. Jack. 
more bait. Yeah, smoke jack Raval. Uh, yep, I'll keep that for bait. Maybe I'll chunk that up. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't know how this is going to play out. Right now, I'm not very um, impressed with the bite on the jig, so I'm going to try bait. All right. That's uh, so because the question is, am I, am I not catching them because they're, I'm, they're just not hitting the bucktail, or you know, so are they here or are they not here? <sighs> Ugh. Should have done this before putting it down. All right, now let's run, run a bait through there. I hope one of those never lands on my kayak. It is nasty stuff. All right, I made a couple drifts through the prime spot. Not a touch on that lizard fish, and that should have been a prime bait for them. So um, I'm going to move a little and uh, continue jigging. Weakfish. Yeah. Oh, why couldn't you have fallen over? Yeah, I know I called it a weak fish. It's a speckled trout of some sort. A little different coloring than what I catch on Pine Island. Uh, is it a different fish? Uh, I'm not sure. So all that beeping, all that adjusting I'm doing on the motor is that when I'm running up, I'm running up at like 95% power, uh, 9.5. Um, but then when I'm fishing like this and I want to do little tweaks, I only want it at like one and a half. So when I'm getting up to the top of the drift, I have to you know, hit that minus button a whole bunch of times to get it from like nine and a half down to one and a half where I can just exercise um, some kind of fine drift control, which, which is what I'm doing right now. season or probably short or I don't know I never get to keep these things good size though for me
All right, getting desperate here. Uh, gonna try a chunk. Um, you know, nothing hit the lizard fish. Let's put a piece of meat down. You know, um, are they here? Yep. Here's a look at the bottom makeup. There's a piece of that, it's like a chunk of limestone and stuff. And yep, do not know why I'm putting it back in the kayak. And that is the only thing caught on that chunk. So back to the jig. And this time I went to a, um, I was using a three quarter ounce going up to a one ounce jig. And that's really because the wind is picked up and the current's picked up. So yeah, see if going a little heavier helps me stay down. Okay, getting a little better, a little better. Man, they hit. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll take I'll take that anytime. little because they grow to 500 pounds and more okay okay and a couple more drifts with the one ounce didn't do anything I, I really feel like three quarters is the correct weight I want to use as light a weight um, jig as I can and so back to the three quarter Okay, a small catfish, and that was the prime bait when I was here the, the last trip, which was two years ago, when they weren't hitting the bucktail. So, guess what I'm going to do with this? This guy's going to go right down. Yeah, I apologize for the wind noise, but, you know, if I put the wind sock on that camera, it's, it's hot. You know, you can't feel it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Um, that camera is definitely going to overheat with the wind sock on, so, oh well. And, uh, yeah, that, I've got the trolling motor running probably 10% here into the wind. This is exactly like fluke fishing. You know, I'm doing drift control here, trying to keep that speed in a nice range, you know, maybe 1.2 miles an hour or so, one. Um, and uh, so it's cutting out the wind component of the drift.
not a not a monster, but you know, a better one for sure. How many times did that guy see my buck tail? Or even the chunk, or even you know, lizard fish. That was a good hit. Good hit. Feels like a fluke. Wow, it feels like a fluke. Ha! Ah, it's a fluke! <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, alright, I'm not netting him, but that's the biggest one I've ever had in Florida. Oh, wow, did that feel like a fluke. <laughs> wow, that's a good one for here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to... Well, I know it's not a fluke. It's like a, a gulf flounder, a southern flounder. And I believe now after looking it up that the three prominent spots there that kind of form a triangle that this is a gulf flounder. Okay, so that was cool, uh, but now the tide has slacked, and, you know, boy, I had that one catfish put it down, boom, best Goliath, you know, right away. So um, I did think about this ahead of time. I brought some frozen shrimp, and uh, I, I went to a place, I, I ran a couple of minutes to a spot where it had looked good to me. I tried for groupers a couple of years ago, but it was inundated with catfish. Uh, I could use some catfish for bait, so <laughs> I'm going to see if I can catch a couple. This never works. <sighs> okay, very easy to get a few catfish. Um, okay, watch in front of the boat. Maybe 100, 150 feet, just stare out in front of the boat. <laughs> Don't come much closer than that, please. Getting close. Oh, here's a freeze frame. It's <laughs> about three feet off the water. You can see the white underbelly. You can see the tail. There it is about to land. Um, it's spotted. Um, does anybody know why they do that? 
<laughs> That's cool. Okay, I went to the prime spot with the catfish. Not a touch. I've moved to a secondary spot. Oh, oh, finally. Somebody's on it. That's a shark. That's not a grouper. <laughs> that is a shark. I'm surprised he's not off yet. Oh, okay, well, that's to be expected, right? Uh, I couldn't catch anything on the live catfish. Back to jigging. Something on the jig. Decent trout. I still don't know what it is, turtle. Yeah, turtle. Dead turtle? Dead turtle. No? Resting turtle? I don't know. Doesn't look so dead. No, I'm not gonna mess with them. I don't know. Doesn't look so good either. I'm guessing that's a dead one? I don't know. Maybe it's Kevin Malone's turtle. All right, so I'm going to try a spot I haven't fished before. I had run over it previously and um, saw some decent-looking structure, so I, I marked it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm desperate at this point. You know, I've worked over. I've got a couple of really good spots, and I've worked them over both jigging, bait. You know, you've, you've seen what I've got. You know, I've got a few fish, but, um, yep, going to just try a different piece. Ooh. Wow, so I had just put down on that spot I hadn't fished before, and, you know, an instant fish. You can bet I worked that over and over again. Jigs, bait, couldn't pull another one off it, and, and that was it. So, all right, uh, not, uh, you know, a blockbuster trip, but I'm not going to complain. You know, I had fun. I caught some fish. It's always cool being here. Um, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. And don't forget my books. And you can learn more about those at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon.